Why is the real estate market so hot? I mean, it is sizzling hot. Has it been this way since 2005, six, seven? It was hot, hot, hot. But this is the best we've ever seen in my little short lifetime. At the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you how to get in this market without any money. Stay tuned. <music> So I'm gonna talk about four things in this video, specifically why this hot, 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 sizzling hot market is happening. I'm gonna talk about the mortgage rates, what's gonna go on there. I'm gonna talk about inflation. Welcome, we haven't seen this combination ever in my lifetime. And then last but not least, how do you get into this thing with no money at all? There's so much money right now, I always say, this is my new saying, you have to be completely asleep to not be a millionaire in this market. So let's begin. So what makes this market so hot? Well, you can say the pandemic and there, it, you're correct. And not only the pandemic, what the politicians chose to do. And I'm gonna leave it right there, right? Cause I am not gonna have that conversation. I'm gonna tell you what they chose to do. Moved a lot of people to other states, to other countries. Because I've taught in six of the seven continents around the world. I have clients that are raising their hands saying, is there another client that can bring me into the country on a work visa so I can get out of Australia, out of Canada, out of other parts of the world? I've never seen a world movement for people just to live the way they want to live. So it is what it is, but I can tell you the inventory in the markets they're moving to, it wasn't there. I'm in Boise, thank God, found a partner, actually it was a client, and then we became partners. And yes, my Canadian husband is on a work visa. That's why I know these things are real, is I just don't teach it, we are deeply living it. So in the Treasure Valley of nine cities, I'll speak specifically to that. Why is it so hot? There's not enough inventory. The inventory is low. I mean, you can barely put a house on the market and the buyers that are getting smarter, they're actually going to the builders. They're finding the builders before the houses even get on the market. They're finding pre-builds, they're finding lots. I had a couple beautiful, uh, you know, he was a cop actually in Seattle and found me through some internet searches. Like random, I get this handwritten letter in Nevada and uh, said, do you have anything I can buy? And I said, I have some lots in Texas. How about we head over there? And the, the movement is amazing because people want to live the way they want to live. So if you're in the right markets, all right, and we all kind of know where they are, right? Arizona's hot, uh, Nevada's hot, Idaho's hot, right? Right up and down, you could say it's because Oregon, Washington, and California is moving. Let's go to the other side of the country. You got New York, you got New Jersey. They're going to the Carolinas. Uh, heavy, heavy movement to the Carolinas. Huge movement into Florida. Now, Florida prices are really high right now. A lot of people have moved inland. They've gone to Texas, they've gone to Oklahoma, they're going to Montana. It's just a mixed bag. So it's a huge, huge issue because 45 million Americans for the first time ever also, a lot who chose to be unemployed for a very long time, as they entered and re-entered the market because those uh, benefits went away, which I wouldn't even call them benefits, but that's another conversation. 45 million Americans are now at a median home income level, you know, household income level. And here's a gross statistic, 80,000 combined income, if you make that in your household, you are considered 25% of the highest earners in the United States. In Canada, it's 163,000. So, and why the difference? Because they're taxed so much more. They're taxed almost 15, 20% more in a lot of cases. So inventory is short, uh, the median home prices dropped. People are, you know, builders are raising prices faster than the people can keep up with them. So what are people doing? Right? And if I was an investor and I am, where are we going? We're going to RV parks. We're buying land to build RV parks because there is a shortage of RVs across the country. What comes right in hand in hand with that? If you think about why is real estate so hot? Storage units, right? If you're gonna live in an RV, what do you need side by side, right? Whoever invented the pod business, genius, because those pods can just move around with you with, ever, with you and your RV. So a lot going on in the real estate market. It is hot, don't see it changing for a while. Now let's talk about interest rates. Let's talk about the mortgages. How are you gonna finance this? So number two, let's talk about record low mortgage rates. I mean, it's still out there and the interest rates are still lower, right, than pre-pandemic. So yes, they've creeped up, right? When the pandemic hit, I mean, it was unprecedented lows. I mean, I know people that did it immediately and have a 1.8, you know, percent mortgage on their 30 year fixed house and phenomenal. That creeped up pretty quickly. Actually, probably by March in the fall of 2020, that really like rocket low has, has been gone. But what keeps it low? What keeps it low is the housing demand. The housing demand is keeping it there. The, the buyers that are coming to the market, they're willing to overbid. They're willing 
to just get in. Again, they don't want to live the way they've been living. They're moving as quickly as they can. A lot of them also, because they're moving from the coast, they're selling out on a lot higher valuation properties. We have people case after case after case of people who have moved from New York, Oregon, specifically California, where a million dollar house there you can get for 250, 300 in some of these other, you know, inland places. So the buyers have also stabilized the interest rates. I don't think it's going to change. Are they going to go together? That's the big question. Is the, is the real estate market and the interest rates going to move together? Probably. At the end of 2021, absolutely not. Into 2022, not for a while. I mean, I think maybe it might start shifting a little bit in the fall of 2022 but we will see. I'm going to keep that as an open door. I'm not sure. I won't predict that right now. Now let's talk about the big thing. I'm going to say elephants in the room, the obvious one. You either know about it or you don't know about it is inflation. So right now I want you to comment. What do you know about inflation? What's your plan to handle inflation? Put some comments in and you could write anything. You could say, I don't know a darn thing about it. You could give me some, you know, economic, you know, description of what you're going to do, but I'm talking the household. I'm talking you and your family. What are you going to do about it? And I will have videos all over YouTube as we walk through this inflationary period. I've never lived through one in my lifetime. I think maybe when I was like really, really young uh, on the farm in Nebraska, my parents had to live through it. But as an adult buying with using your money and spending and how are you handling it? How are you handling your financial choices with inflation? It's really a serious deal. So just some really basic numbers you should be thinking about. And by the way, all those comments, we will respond to. In fact, I would want to engage you. I want you to come to my live broadcast where we interact and continue to have conversations about all these money topics. So while you're down there, give me a comment. You might as well subscribe because you should be in this conversation every day. And by the way, if you listen to Ramsey and Orman, you really can't listen to both of us. There's just no comparison, right? They're simple, not even safe. They live what I teach, but teach you some like interesting broke things. So you should just delete them. And that would be even more fun. So back to you. Inflation, what is it, right? It's the cost of goods going up. I mean, gas has gone up 100% in some markets. Your Starbucks, for those of you out shop, you know, that go Starbucks shopping every day, if you haven't noticed, you're up anywhere between $1.20 to $1.80 per cup. Um, some of you might want to, you know, consider, you know, doing your own little machine at home. And I'm serious about some of these purchases. Some of you haven't bought like a great coffee machine at home. You pay that off in ROI that in... I don't know how much coffee you drink. I have a client. He drinks four ventes a day. That's the big one with four extra shots. Like just his cup is almost $10. So he's spending $40 a day. I don't know. I think the machine might cost 400. It might take 10 days to ROI that. So some of you who have been avoiding equipment purchases for some things that you are doing, you may want to consider them. Right, so how you spend is so vital in this economy. In the description at the end, I'm gonna give you a link to how, how can you beat inflation? How, what, like really down to the nitty gritty. It's so important. If you don't increase your ability to make more money, your, the inflation costs are gonna kill you. Now let's just speak specifically to real estate, which is what this video is about. If you're a renter, right, cause I'm a landlord, we're gonna be ratcheting that up, right? We can't continue to get the same rent when everything else that's moving inflation and moving our prices up. And almost every landlord that I know is moving 25, 50, hundred dollars. If you're not making more income and you think you're on a fixed rent, you need to check your lease. So there's a lot of variables that you need to consider with inflation. If you're on the fix and flip side, you got material costs that are bigger than you've ever done. I have a client who, who went into a really big remodel and his costs are up 368%. So there's a time to stop and reevaluate. There's a time to maybe bring in some other partners. There's a time to think about a, a different end game because of inflation. Do you move from a long-term, what you thought long-term rentals into short-term rentals? And yes, you can do this in 12 plexes. You can do this in 16 plexes. You're going to be shocked. Some of the strategies we're going to work with you on. So the fourth topic I want to talk about is how do you get started with no money? And again, like I said earlier in the video, you have to be almost asleep to use the money that's available and be a millionaire in 12, 18, 24 months. But you have to be all in. You gotta have a mentor. You just don't do this casually. So where do you go find the money? Well, first of all, there's investment cards. Yep, they're gonna come in the form of a credit card. I use the word, the term investment cards. We make it up, by the way, because I think most people have such a weird association to credit cards. They're like, oh my God, I can't go into debt. Well, 
when I'm done with you, you might have $100, $200 million of debt. And it's good debt because we're going to leverage it against great real estate assets. When I can help you as a client, I always have to put that in there. I'm not going to help you get any of this kind of stuff, show you how to get funding without some mentoring. And then you end up broke because you have a new car and a big screen TV and say, oh, Laurel got me this money and now I'm broke. No, you spent it wrong. So completely willing to help you. What you do is there's a whole application process. It's super simple. It might take about two, four, six weeks, depending on you and your credit and your ability to get paperwork done and you apply up to 28, 29 banks that we have access to. And it comes in the form sometimes of a wire and a loan, but mostly it comes in the form of a card, 21 months, zero interest. There's a little bit of a fee, but I'll tell you, that's really cheap money. When you compare that against hard money loans, which are annually anywhere between 10, 12, 15, 17% in money that you'd have to pay for, I would prefer to see you get that. The only challenge you're gonna have in that kind of money is potentially the down payment of a property. And you never know, some owners take credit cards. It's legal and you can do it up to certain amounts. So investment cards are a great way. I love investment cards for fix and flips because you can use them to buy materials. You can use them to, to pay subs. You can use them for almost all but the down payment. And again, you gotta kind of check that out and depending on the way that the banks give you the loan. So number one, that's no money down. You can do the whole thing. As long as you have the whole fix and flip, I mean, I was going to say have it done in 21 months. You should be able to turn three projects in 21 months at 0%. I mean, just that alone, if you're making between 50 and 100 per project, you're up north of, you know, $150,000, $200,000 just on that one move. Now let's go into the government funding, which is available to any company. So again, as a client, we'll help you get incorporated the right way, whether it's an LLC, an S Corp, C Corp, however we need to do that. You do need to have a P&L and a balance sheet. And you say, well, how do I do that if I don't have one? You do have one, you're just not organized in a way that you have one, and then you apply. And I can tell you, I have real estate investors who have applied, they have seven companies, they've applied all companies and hundreds of thousands per company. I have one, I think it's gonna come in just over a million for one company, a million. You say, well, that's a millionaire. Well, it's a million cash. Now you're gonna go out and buy assets. In my world, in my coaching to you, we would do a variety of you do some holds, you do some definitely short-term rentals or Airbnb on it, you do some flips and you just monetize that and make a million, two million. There's so many strategies to teach you. Um, go back into my YouTube channel. There's some EIDL loans, very specifically, you know, crafted about what they are, what you need, the requirements, and uh, go back there, get a little more education, call our office and let us help you out. The big one that I, I always have to end with is OPM which you can always go get other people's money, right? Hard money lenders, they're gonna loan between, some of them you can find right now are eight, nine, 10. But if I'm your hard money lender, you're gonna pay 12, 14, 15. And I know some who won't move off 16 and 17. So you can pay other people to have their money and that's a lot more. Go for the government money or go for the investment card. So there's a lot of ways to do it. Let me help you. I want you to go to my blueprint below. Inside the description, I call it my millionaire maker blueprint. And it's how I became a millionaire. Inside of there also are some, I'm gonna say some testimonials, but some real conversations with some uh, clients of mine who became multimillionaires. How they did it, what's their blueprint. They followed mine and they expanded into theirs. So click on the link and enjoy.